some examples of using SiteSpace to handle Scopus data. Okay, I here I have a few folders. I'll show you the uh, first step. Uh, in the first step, you will save the uh, Scopus the search result from Scopus to the folder in uh, RIS format. So if you want to take a look what's the content of those files, like uh, here uh, you have some uh, fields called PI for title and for example, uh, these are the authors and these are abstracts. So, so this will be the initial input. So let's go to SiteSpace. This is the opening page you will need to agree to proceed. So suppose uh, the, this is the first time we have this data, we need to convert this data. So using this menu, data input, export, uh, using the Scopus. So now let's take this data uh, from original download data So the search was based on citation analysis, the topic citation analysis. So in this folder, the original uh, data download from Scopus is here, right? So I select that one. And the output will be the uh, converted one. So it will be, uh, I will put in the same, same folder to get to that Scopus again. Scopus citation analysis. This is converted this time, so I will select that. So press this button to convert the RS format to the. It looks like the Web of Science format. Uh, so just click on that. Now here you have an option. Uh, in Scopus, the uh, we have titles in the references, the citing references. So that would be a good thing to have that uh, in the visualization. So I like to give you this option. So yes, well, uh, your choice. So after you click on this uh, button, uh, SiteSpace will do the conversion. So it says here you have uh, already converted so many files, and these files contains uh, about quarter million cited references. The accuracy or the rate of conversion is uh, ninety nine percent, so pretty good. And the uh, the reasons we have some uh, the one percent or actually less than one percent uh, that has some various uh, various problems with the format or missing data. So let's go back to here. So from the original uh, folder, we put the data in the converted folder. So if you uh, really like, you can take a look in these files called the uh, invalid references. Uh, these files contain the one that didn't get converted or some problems with it. You can see what we do with it. So the next step, actually, I recommend you don't have to, but I recommend this one is to convert uh, to take the files from the converted folder and take one more step. So from this uh, WS tab and take that converted data go back here again. So data size this looking for Scopus. Citation analysis. Uh, so here we're going to take the converted files as the input, and then output again to a folder called the uh, uh, unit. So uh, go back to that. So actually, you can cut and paste the path. That'll be easier. But here I just go through the uh, file folders. Okay, so this time we're going to put the results into a folder.
order for the data unique and the store unique. And using this button, this is called the remove duplicates. Uh, and actually, we're not going to re remove duplicates, but instead we're going to uh, reorganize the files according to the year of publication. So that will uh, actually speed up the, the process. So this, uh, the block size is how many records we want to uh, put into each file. And you can choose bigger one or smaller one. So after you press the start button, this one actually help report uh, your data actually ranges for uh, 53 years. Uh, you have some one record from 1966 and then uh, getting more and more until 2020. And saved in the unique uh, data unique folder. So in total here you can see there are about uh, 6,000 uh, records exported. The, the input data there are seven, slightly over 7,000. So uh, the 6,596 is data instead we're going to use. So we have done that part and go back to the main interface for this. I have uh, I have already created the project. Take me through. Yeah. Uh, for this one, let's take a look at the project edit properties. So the uh, the title of the project is just remind yourself what it's about. And here, this is the important part. Uh, you need to set the project folder. Or the project directory to uh, to somewhere on your computer that's called a project. It will use to save all the intermediate results and all the sample files and so on. The next one is the data directory. That is one we're going to use uh, from the data underscore unique, and this is about six thousand nine hundred something. So we're going to use that one here. The data source uh, you could select uh, Scopus. Things already converted. Uh, it doesn't matter too much at this point. So here the uh, fields are highlighted. Uh, they are probably uh, you should consider first whether you want to change them or you want to keep them. Uh, for the initial uh, run, you can you don't have to make any change. But I'll go through this very briefly. Uh, but what what do we mean by all these numbers? So uh, number three here under this uh, link retaining factor, and this is about uh, controlling the density of the network. Uh, and this uh, maximum link per node uh, five means each node can have maximum of five links. Uh, sometimes you want to uh, have have a network with uh, good enough clarity, so you want to have this number around five. Uh, if you do not want to have this limit, uh, limit, you can put negative one here. That's always uh, remove the limits in the middle case. So this one, number one, says uh, if you want to qualify, a node should have at least one citation. And if you have, uh, if you want to raise this to two or three, you're going to have a fewer number of nodes. So let's two here. So that means all the cited references must have uh, at least two citations or more. So the look back here is uh, this number. Uh, controls the length of the citations. Uh, so from a citing article site to a reference, and the time span is controlled by this parameter. So this number three means only the citations to the publication within the last three years will be considered. Uh, cited citations to uh, much older references will be ignored. So if you don't want this one to be limited to three years, you can change to eight or change to negative one, which means uh, it will include all the citations. 
So save this one. Now we can go back to the uh, main interface. So for this one, I will keep all the the default settings. Uh, I will go from 971 because only one or two publications before that each year. So it will make sense to have a window uh, focus on the later years with more data. So we can also change the parameters like the selection criteria here, top end, G index, and so on. But for now, let's keep it simple, just top end, that means with the levels. I'll explain the levels later on, but for now, let's go start the process. So as you can see, the reporting, uh, the thing here is uh, process the uh, files. Now, if you look here, the number of nodes is 1,261, and the links are 4,000 links. Uh, we can just visualize it. So this visualization will show a network uh, at this point, and you will you can wait for a little bit to allow the network expand, the stretch out, and then looks uh, uh, have a nice structure here and the color is uh, color region is on the top starting from blue purple and get warmer red and yellow so these are representing number years so if you look at the network structure uh, it will uh, get settled uh, by uh, little by little so you once it is more or less stable, you can stop by clicking here and stop the movement. So initially, it will highlight some of the nodes with high, uh, highly cited references. So you see the name, the year, and the name, the year, the size of it is proportional to the citation. So that's the option here. So typically, uh, you will do uh, next is to find clusters which means that uh, you want to simplify the network by dividing the network into uh, uh, some clusters. So now you can see here the number of clusters identified and the names are, uh, uh, we call the cluster labels. They indicate, indicate, uh, indicate, <laughs> indicate, indicate the uh, most is cited uh, terms or actually the titles from inciting articles to a particular cluster. So a few things we could do here to make it easier to read. So you see the labels may overlap. Now you click this option here, note label to minimize overlaps. So this, uh, or you can see the, the labels spread out. So uh, this is one way to look at uh, the structure of this, looking at how the uh, node, in, in particular the, the labels of articles and also the labels of uh, clusters, uh, clusters distributed. So another uh, useful one probably is this button. If you press this button, it will use the rainbow colors to highlight for example, highlighted clusters. The largest one is usually the zero, cluster zero. That's in red, and if you're familiar with the rainbow color, you will know, and red, and second largest will be orange, and then uh, green, and, and blue, and purple. So that will give you the top 10 largest clusters in a very uh, kind of easy, to identify where they are. So you can also uh, use this button to control the other options. So let me use this node size to control how how big this node size will show. Sometimes you want to see the structure. You don't want to use uh, much bigger circles to overlap. So uh, this is one one view. You want to uh, you can switch back 
back and forth. This is the one that used the citation tree rings. Let's click this again. You can increase the size of the, the nodes. So each time you press here, it will uh, increase it. So for now, you can press this button and it will detect the citation burst over uh, this network. So now you can you can read through this network to, uh, to look from the very beginning. The systematic review is the topic uh, for the first cluster or the largest cluster. And the second one is a mentally reader. And the third one, actually number two, is the nursing literature and some papers around here. So this is an initial uh, process about this, how to get a visualization like this. And you can save this image by cl uh, clicking on this button. This will save this to your project folder. It tell you this is a, a network of a DCA for document code citation analysis, the B for number of nodes, and E for a number of links. It's saved to a PNG folder. Save there. Uh, so yeah, this is the uh, what we call the cluster view. So another thing, another view is uh, for the timeline view. I'll go there briefly for this initial visit process. So I can move this one. And I, I can also move this uh, view like this a little bit. So I want to control the size of these labels here. This, uh, so that I can see them easily. So like yes. And I uh, reduce that very quickly so I, I can bring it back like, uh, like this. So you can also use uh, something called the fisheye views to stretch these nodes uh, so that you can see a bit more details. Uh, there are other controls. You can turn this background to a white background. Uh, you see the colors uh, of the rings. You can change them to different colors. So each manual arrange for those purposes. And uh, finally, for the uh, Scopus data, you can label the clusters based on the cited references. Click on that button here. So watch here the titles uh, or the labels of those clusters will be different. So if you remember the first uh, version, I was using citing articles, title words. Now this time using cited references titles. So if you remember the the first one, it, it was a systematic review, and now here, based on the citation titles, is a new crown indicator. And then second one, third one, they are slightly different because of the, the source of the difference. So uh, I guess uh, this I will stop here and I will create other videos to explain other functions. Thank you.